Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. Today, I'm going to do something a little different, doing just some personal project painting, but I kind of wanted to show you to give you some ideas of some fun stuff. I had a friend of mine, her mom went to Provence, and she came back with lovely pigments. And these pigments are so cool. They are from an area in Provence where there is a quarry. This is a little information on the back of it. So if you know anything about this area or this little art store or this quarry where all of this stuff is made, that'd be super cool if you would tell us some stories in the comments. Um, but she brought this little thing of pigments back from there and I've sat with them for a couple of weeks just kind of admiring how beautiful they are because they are rather beautiful and trying to figure out how to get into the fun little containers here that were taped up without busting powder everywhere as I got into them. <laughs> and so finally I got up the courage to sit here and figure out how to get them open and get them uh, made into some watercolor. And so I've mixed up my own gum arabic solution. So it's got four tablespoons of gum arabic, one, one teaspoon of honey and one teaspoon of glycerin and that's kind of the formula that I've got in here and that'll make a lot of watercolor like that made all these colors with no problem and basically you put you know powder out onto a good say like a tablespoon of powder out onto your mixing palette and enough of the gum arabic to then mix that into a nice flowy liquid and then you spoon those into watercolor pans and then as they dry, they're ready to start using them. And some of these dried uh, pretty flat up top, and then some of these made little divots um, where, I don't know, it's the different type of pigment or whatever that was. And so after they dried, I have now made a color swatch book here in my painter's diary. I like to show you all these every time I use it because every time I use it somebody's like oh, I need one of those <laughs> um, this is the painters color diary it's the watercolor one 9 by 12 and I do link all these under the video for you um, so if you feel like you need one of these what I like about the watercolor diary is it's got the sheet in between each page to protect it and you can swatch anything in these uh, except oil paint and there is an oil paint diary that you could get for the oil paint, but you could do acrylic paint, pencils, Neo Color 2 crayons, watercolors, anything that you want to swatch out. These have been fantastic. Now I have a couple of them, and I'm sure the more pages I use, I'm going to need some more. And you can draw these yourself on your own watercolor paper. Of course you can, but these are just so easy and convenient and lovely and have a black line so you can see the opacity. And so I swatched all these colors out and I didn't have color names for them obviously because these were pigments uh, that I got so I just put a number on the end of my pan so I kind of know which one of these was that color and let me tell you I'm super glad I did that now because some of these do not look like the color that was in the pan like who knew that this one, which looks almost like that one, would be so light and almost disappear, whereas these other ones are so much more vivid. And this number five, who knew that would be almost not there too? It's very light. It's kind of amazing uh, what these different types of dirt did. So I'm going to paint today. I'm going to make some little abstracts and for the very first time, explore what these colors are like what if I make an abstract like some of the ones that I usually make what am I going to get and so I'm kind of lining up the colors here just to decide what what color palette do I want to use today and I'm glad I have these swatches now because you definitely cannot tell what these are in their little boxes <laughs> so let me decide on the colors I'm going to use and I'll be right back. All right, so I've decided on number two, three, five, six, and 14. 
and there's no rhyme or reason to that. It's simply the ones that were kind of drawing me in as I was looking here at the color choices. So I think what I'm going to do is create some square abstracts with these just to get an initial feel for how these are and what these do because I've not painted with these yet. This is the very first experiment and I like bringing you along on some little personal projects and stuff so you can play and experiment vicariously through whatever it is that I wanted to do that day. <laughs> And I think I'm going to start these off with some matte pencil. I'm just kind of going to a, like a go-to project for me to see, you know, how are these going to work? Do I like them? I can tell you now I already like them. <laughs> but I would like to eventually create several pieces of art with these and then have one framed and give it to my friend's mother because she brought these all the way from Provence and thought of me. I just thought that was amazing. And I know that most people that bring stuff back, they hope you do something with what you brought them. I'm really doing something <laughs> with what they brought me. I sent her a picture uh, this week letting her know, hey, I actually made paints this week with these yummy pigments and I wanted you to know that I appreciate it that much. Now what I did notice when I was color swatching these out, um, you know, these pigments are dirt. Basically, they're natural pigments from a quarry. And some of these seem to be harder than others. And I thought that was a fascinating uh, thing to see. And this one almost reminds me of like concrete, like a concrete or cement pigment ground really fine and you can see from the color that we're getting it kind of is that color so it's kind of interesting to imagine in your mind like what what rock or what bit of the ground did that come from how super cool is that so these are super light i liked it because it was light um it's almost like pushing around graphite <laughs> And I kind of just am going with the flow. I'm not thinking very hard about where I'm sticking stuff. I do tend to like start in the corners when I do things like this and work my way in. Um, generally, I like them tall rather than wide. But once these are done, you can definitely flip them to see which way works best. And I like to paint several when I do something like this because it's always going to be one that you're like, ooh. That one's terrible. And there's always going to be one or two that you're like, hmm, I don't know. And then there's always going to be one that you're like, whoa, that one's amazing. And when I'm painting, I'm always looking for that one that's amazing. And if I only painted one, I'd never get to the amazing one <laughs> because I'd be so disgusted and upset. Ooh, look at that color. I'd be so disgusted and upset that the one I painted wasn't the one that it might be months before I come back to my painting table and try again. Whereas now I'm like, ooh, every day's a good paint day. And I like to have fun when I paint. I'm not sure what I'm going to end up with when I'm done. My goal is not to have an endpoint in my mind to start with. I'm trying to go with the flow, do some intuitive painting. You know what? Chatting with you guys while I'm painting helps me be even more intuitive because you don't know how many people say, oh my gosh, how do you talk while you paint? <laughs> Apparently I just like to run my mouth. I'm a social painter. I'm a social photography shooter. When I go shoot photographies, I like going out in a group and shooting with a lot of people. I like to look around and chat and see what other people are seeing that maybe I missed. Um, so I'm kind of a social painter photographer person when it comes to creating and I think that sometimes when you're looking around at what others are doing it's not to copy it's not to be exactly what they're getting it's not to steal what they're doing but it's to be inspired to see things that maybe you weren't going to see uh, if you went and you just made like a quick walkthrough through something or you started doing something like this and maybe you only painted one and you know, when you're social about it, you start thinking about other things and then you start letting your mind kind of get looser because I'm talking. I'm not thinking too hard about what I'm doing because my mind is focused on running my mouth. 
<laughs> so this really helps with the intuitive painting. If you are having trouble loosening up while you're painting, you should call somebody on the phone and say, hey, talk to me for a bit while I'm painting so that I can take my mind off of what I'm painting and see if that will help you loosen up some. Ooh, look at that. Now I will tell you, like one of the first ones that I started, you know, as I was going, uh, maybe my least favorite, but now as I'm getting around to them and coming back, look at this one right here. Oh, that one. Ha ha ha. All right, so before I cover everything else up, actually I do want to go back to that very first color and maybe work some of that right here in this white area. And now I kind of want this to dry and I might do some of my yummy mark making on top. It's going to be very interesting. You know, all these colors were very dirt centered because they came out of a great big quarry. Um, so it's very interesting, the very beautiful natural palettes that we got out of this. And it'll be interesting to see how they dry, if they've granulated. And you know, we could come back in while this is still wet and add some salt. Let me see, where is my salt? Here we go. Just to see, will the salt add to our texture. You don't have to do it on all of them, but let's just see what we get. Will it soak into there or not? Be kind of an interesting little experiment. Might not do anything at all, and it might be too dry, but it will be interesting to see. And then we need to let these dry completely. Let's just do a little on all four of them. <laughs> and then before I take the salt off, I'll need to let this dry completely, so I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back. All right, I think we're dry, and I'm going to take the salt off of this. Or at least that one was a little bit wet. That's okay. I walked away for a while, so I'd be not tempted to use my heat gun. Because with things like this, you want to let them kind of do their thing. and You want to let them have enough time to do their magic. But I also want to see what we're getting, so. <laughs> I'm just using uh, rough sea salt here, and I do just put those back into my sea salt container. I just dig through it if I need clean salt. And I reuse that because I'm using great big pieces of salt. And I think I'm going to mark on top of these with some of my soft pastels because I want some more marks, and I'm going to try to keep it in the same colors and just play and see what I get. I'm not worried, you know, when I'm doing stuff like this about ruining something. I'm more interested in the play part of the painting and ooh, look at that color. And just seeing like where can we get if I add stuff in or I do stuff with some of these. I'm gonna move these out of the way actually. And, you know, at this point, I could go some different directions and look and see, like, I'm really feeling this one. Eh, this one's okay. I'm loving this one here. And this one, oh, I do like the colors and the, the way it's meshing. But I love this one and this one the most. And I think I'm going to come in. Okay, so really, pick the one that's not your favorite and try it on that one first. <laughs> and just see what you get before you go to your favorite piece. Because if you go directly to your favorite piece and then you're like, oh, I didn't like that at all, you ruined your favorite piece. And this way, you can be like, oh, let me try this on the one that I think I like, but maybe it's not my favorite. Look at that. Okay, I love that. All right, now I'm thinking a little bit of this and everything. Work your way up to your favorite ones. <laughs> this one is my second not his favorite, but I like it. So work your way up. Pick your not favorites and then work your way to your favorites. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so this one and this one. <laughs> this one might be my most favorite. And, you know, it could backfire. You could do all this and get to your favorite and then think, oh, wish I hadn't done that. But, you know, this is what art is all about. It's about experimenting and figuring some of these things out. Oh, 
see look at this extra let's just go for it be brave be brave <laughs> oh yeah let me tell you this up here where that salt did that yummy stuff kind of digging it as I cover some up with this pastel but I am kind of digging what it did <laughs> it's so pretty there okay I love that all right good choice good choice let's see what color is this random one oh yeah good choice okay I like the extra elements we're getting here with the pastel I'm still staying in my color palette but I'm kind of adding in some extra layers maybe some extra details maybe something that just adds that little bit of extra interest to a piece and when I'm using pastels on pieces of art like this um, I will spray this with the soft pastel fixative by Sennelier um, because the powder keeps shedding if this were a big pastel piece on pastel paper I would not spray spray on it but because the watercolor piece that I've added pastel I would consider doing this but I would do it on a sample piece first to see what it would look like because so many times you start using something like that and you're like uh oh it did something I didn't expect and I don't like what it did and so now you've got to work with that and if you did a sample piece first you could have known what that was going to do you'd know and while I'm doing this I do not blow the pastel powder everywhere um, you'll notice I haven't blown the pastel powder off this at all yet um, usually what I'll do is I will stand it up and tap the powder off or take it outside to blow it I don't want this powder all over my desk <laughs> it'll be there forever it'll get on everything that you ever create let's see what this color is same that's almost the same color I want this kind of pretty peachy color do I have any in here that's that color Ooh, that's good enough let's see what would I what would I do with this maybe I just want some <gasps> that's what I wanted just some line or something going through ho oh, ho totally liked that let's just bring a little over here and you know these are water soluble too so let's just look at that on this over here um, if you wanted to I could blend these in with some water and then let that dry like a watercolor so we'll just let that kind of do its thing there oh totally liked that line there let's do them with that over here you could do this with pencil you don't have to do it with a pastel oh that was perfect that was perfect let's do that on this one that was perfect see that's why it's nice to work on a piece that's not your favorite or maybe it's almost your favorite and then you can be like okay that's the mark I needed let's go let's go on the diagonal here on this one. Oh, see so pretty let's put a touch of this up here maybe just a little bite down there all right I think I'm loving this all right wow can you say these look amazing look at this this one is one of my favorite I could definitely see framing this one. <sighs> oh, that one is so beautiful this one ho 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 loved the way the little pattern went up the side the little circles that one's beautiful this one look at the texture that the salt did with that natural pigment how cool is that and this one lovely lovely so I would say out of this I got two that were my absolute favorite that's these two and you know you could also look at these and oh, look at that that's pretty cool right there you can look at these in different directions and you'll start to see different things oh this one's pretty any direction that we take it because <laughs> I'm kind of liking it like that with these two on that side uh, let's just see do we like any of these better this other way 
You know, when you decide on a direction for an abstract piece, you need to sign it at the bottom on whichever way is the correct way. Because if you take it to the framer with no signature, they frame it the wrong way. Guaranteed. Happened to me. And I was like, what the heck? This is upside down. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. See, now kind of looks like there's a waterfall in there with the way that's kind of going. Okay, I like it better that way. So it's always helpful. These two are this way always helpful to take a look and see do you like oh see okay i do like these this way better ha 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 i love this hope you enjoyed coming along here on my own little personal project using some lovely pigments from provence that my friend's mother brought back for me and I'm actually loving these so much that I can see those framed. So that could be the project. I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> what a great painting day. All right. I'll see you guys next time.